now that we know this thing makes 30.9 volts and a little less than 3 amps, it appears to function correctly. Let's see what we can do about getting 3 amps out of it. And this is the 3 amp supply. It's an HY3003. Zero zero three. 30 volts at 3 amps. The D is the version from what I can make out. They do make a duplex supply. I think that's a D-2. And they do make an E and an F. Uh, I believe those one of those latter versions uses a toroidal transformer instead of the E core, E I core transformer. I cannot find a schematic for this uh, 3 amp model. I was able to find a schematic for a 5 amp model. And uh, it apparently is an old schematic. It used analog meters. And somebody has annotated it uh, with voltages to assist in testing. And this schematic was for the dual model. So this is a single, this makes it a dual. But this schematic is workable. We have a 12 volt supply up here. Uh, this is not a bridge rectifier, it's two full wave rectifiers. Uh, there's 17, 0, 17 tap here on this transformer. So 17 volts is rectified and fed to this three terminal regulator. It gives us 12 volts. And that's used some places right off here to supply integrated circuits. It's also used to develop a two and a half volt reference using this uh, TL431. The other half of the transformer supplies a minus six volt supply. It's regulated with a zener. This is the main supply with two relays switching it so that the output voltage from the raw DC increases in anticipation of increasing output voltage. A sample of the uh, reference is sent down here in these two wires to the amp and volt adjust. Now here's where this schematic falls a little bit short. So I'm going to put it away and pull up a schematic for a 10 amp supply. Now the 10 amp supply has a third relay and a third little power supply here. So we have to ignore the third relay and this third little power supply. It does develop 12 volts. That is the 10 amp supply. It does develop a, a two and a half volt reference. And samples are sent down to these potentiometers amps and volts adjust. These little circuit boards are where the potentiometers are mounted on the front panel. So this is a coarse adjust potentiometer and this is a fine adjust potentiometer. And that's duplicated down here for uh, volts. However, maximum current 
and maximum voltage is set by these two little potentiometers here, which are these two potentiometers here and here. Now this circuit board is not identical to either the 5 amp unit or the 10 amp unit. However, for example, in a 10 amp unit we have uh, six parallel pass transistors and six current sensing resistors uh, in parallel, essentially. Here we have two current sensing resistors with room for a third. So maybe a 5 amp supply has uh, three. We also have room for a third relay. These potentiometers are a 5k and a 200 ohm with the 5k being for the amp adjust and the 200 ohm for the voltage adjust. Here they're marked VR2 and VR5, but here they're marked W5 and 6. But one is marked 201, which would be a 200 ohm, and one is marked 502, which would be a 5K, which is suspiciously identical. This set of four diodes is right here. This 01717 transistor, uh, transformer winding is here. That would be wires 11, 12, and 13. This three terminal regulator is here. Tells it over it's here on this heat sink. And it's marked N3 on the circuit board, and it's marked U1 on this, but on the 5 amp schematic, it's marked N3. So with these schematics, you can pretty well piece together how it works. What is not clear to me, I know what it does, but it's not clear to me, is this blue winding. Back up here. This thin blue wire here and here. Go up to an unmarked, well, it's J10, but where this one's marked with a voltage, this one's either unmarked or unreadable. In any event, this pair of wires supplies a little power supply with a three terminal device here and a five volt uh, jack, which goes down to the uh, front panel meters. Understand that. So this probably develops this 5 volts here. This three terminal regulator though is a 7809 which I'm not going to trace out but I don't quite understand it. Turn it on. I'm going to set it to uh, 30 volts. Isn't that interesting? No longer goes to 30 volts. 
never mind. There we go. I had the current set to zero. Here we go. So I'm already normal now. So I'm going to put a short on it and see what we can get here. All right, with this shorted through my bench meter, I read 2.92 amps here. I read uh, 2.908 on the bench meter. And it, it's in constant current uh, mode. So I'll get a little screwdriver. And the amp setter is here which is the 5K potentiometer on the board, which is here. So I'll tilt this up and I'll get the 5K potentiometer and see if we can change this. And we'll put it up to 3.5, 3.05 amps. It looks like I could go to 376, 374 on my bench meter, but 305, 306. So that'll be the maximum output for the current. Let me take this and unshort it. And you see the maximum voltage is 309. 30.9 and that's set by this potentiometer you see I can go up and go down to 29 and go up to 31 I'll take back to 305 307. now we have an output of 30 volts and an output of 3 amps I'll disconnect these power cord. While researching this, a guy was asking the question, can I reconnect it for 200 volts? He says mine is marked 100 volts, here, 110 volts. I believe you can, but there's no guarantee. The incoming voltage is two wires here goes to a board selection here. The on-off switch is mounted on this little PC board. And it appears that by moving these four wires here to this unpopulated socket, this would be a 220 volt power supply. Apparently, I mean, they didn't provide the extra jack. For, they're going to save money, right? So if, if you had this, you could probably desolder this four-pin jack and move it over here. And operate it on uh, 220 volts. Now that's not to say that every one of these had a four-wire primary, a reconnectable primary. It's very possible that some of these with the same front plate only had a two-wire primary. I should point out that with a little bit of effort, I don't know if I'll be able to see them on camera here, these amps and volt supplies are calibratable with this little orange potentiometer. Now, there's no 110 volts or 220 volts on this board, so you don't have to worry about touching with your fingers. You do have to worry about shorting it out in the area of these diodes. But you could go in here, probably hot, and adjust that little potentiometer. It would be much harder to adjust this one on the amp meter. The only place there's 110 or 220 
It's down on this circuit board here. These windings, the heavy red, black, and yellow, are probably no more than 35 volts, 40 volts maybe. So this came very highly recommended uh, on the uh, internet when I was trying to find out schematics and stuff. The heat sink and the heat sink circuit board have room for a third uh, 3055. It's not populated. And as I said, there's room for a third current sensing resistor. I don't know what that's worth. If you happened on a uh, heavier transformer with one extra tap, you could populate this with another relay, another resistor, and a third 3055. You could probably have a 5 amp supply. So that's it for this power supply. It was advertised as not working, but seems to work fine. And it cost me $50. Not bad for a linear power supply. Thank you.